That's right, little barn cat. We're making soap today. Yeah, over the past week or two, I have been furiously making all of the bars of soap that are gonna be coming from our farm. And I figured it'd be kind of fun in today's video for me to show you how exactly I make this beef tallow soap, which in about a month is gonna be available for sale on our website. You can actually see right here, I'm breaking out the batch that I made yesterday. This is what the end process looks like. Really, we gotta start at the beginning. A very good place to start. If you want to learn how to make soap. And for us here on our farm, our soap always starts with beef tallow. So when we slaughtered our steer, Kurt Cobain, earlier this fall, what I did was I took all the fat that I got from him and I chopped it up into chunks and I tossed it in a crock pot and I rendered it down and boiled it for hours and then ultimately filtered it out until I got this substance that you see right here, which is beef tallow. It's whitish in color. It has a nice sort of flavorful beefy smell to it. And in the olden days, they used to always use this as a source of fat for soap. Now beef tallow can be used for all sorts of purposes like cooking, but it's really incredible when it gets used for soap because the soap that it makes is extremely moisturizing. And so all of the soap on our farm always starts with 100% grass-fed beef tallow, like the package I have right here. Now, when my good friend Meg Holler was teaching me how to make soap earlier this year, one of the things that she really impressed upon me was how much of soap making is a science. And so that's why you have to do everything by weights and measures. And so today, as we figure out how much we're gonna have to use of ingredients for our soap, starting with accurate measurements is gonna be really important. And so I use this digital kitchen scale. It's a key part of my tool set for making soap. I'm gonna tear it right here. So that's how much these containers weigh. And then I'm going to add my beef tallow. I actually took some out because I'm going to use it for tomorrow's batch. And so you can see here, we're starting with 1,269 grams of beef tallow. Now, because this is a science and I'm not a very scientific person, I have been keeping notes on every batch of soap I make. And so today's batch of soap is going to be a Molly soap batch. Each variety of soap we have is named after a different animal on the farm. And so we're going to start with 1269 grams of tallow. And so now that I know how much beef tallow I need to use, I can figure out how much coconut oil and olive oil I'm gonna need to use. And then if I bust out my trusty dusty ratio calculator, what I can do is figure out that 1269 of tallow. Let's go back to my recipe and see how much lye I need to get. So my master batch was always 15. 28 of tallow. So 1528 of out tallow means 401 grams of lye, which if I press calculate tells me that I need 333 grams of lye for this recipe. Now lye is a very dangerous and caustic substance that really does make soap soap. You know, when the fats from the tallow and the coconut oil mix together with the lye, creates a chemical reaction which neutralizes the lye and makes it not dangerous, but also gives soap its magical cleaning properties. I'll talk more about mixing lye and what to do and some of the safety precautions later in this video, but first I've got to figure out the ratios for the rest of my soap here. Okay, there we go. Now we have our recipe. Now this year, which is the first year our farm is gonna be offering soaps, we're gonna have six different varieties. Each variety is named after a different animal on our farm. For those of you wondering the animals and flavor combinations, let me give you a little rundown. We have the Toby, which is rose scented and it's an uncolored soap. We have the Abbey, which is a rosemary mint soap with kind of like a dark violet, like blackish almost color to it. We have the Pablo soap, which is a patchouli cedar wood essential oil, and it's got a chocolatey brown color to it. We have the Ginny soap, which is peppermint and wintergreen scented, and it's got this gray color. That was actually the soap that you saw me breaking out earlier this morning. We have the Lil soap, which is a lavender scented, and like light purple colored soap. And then finally, which is today's soap, we're gonna be making Molly Murder Mittens, which is a eucalyptus grapefruit scent that's red because she's Molly Murder Mittens. But now before we can make the rest of our soap, we need to take our tallow, which as you can see here is pretty hard, and we're gonna melt it down. I find the easiest way to do it is to just melt it down in a crock pot. Now you can see the tallow is solid and I'm gonna just put it in the crock pot, shut up the lid. And while we're waiting for this to melt, I'm gonna go do my chores. Good morning, birds. How's everybody doing this morning? I absolutely love the sound of that chorus. Release the Quacken!
Yeah, it's most certainly a frosty one here this morning. The official farm temperature is 11 degrees Fahrenheit. It's definitely a day that makes me very thankful to have this hoop coop. And it's also a good day for me to be cooped up inside working on soap. You know, when I was making my business plan for the farm for 2022, I originally actually didn't intend to make soap. My original plan was that I was gonna take our steer and sell most of his meat as beef jerky. But I ran into some regulatory problems where I couldn't actually make the beef jerky and be able to ship it over state lines. And so that fact made me postpone indefinitely my plans to make beef jerky. I hope to do it one day, but I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. And so my plan B was actually to make soap. Like I had this idea of what if I took what's typically a waste product of my steer and I tried to make a way to create value from that waste product. Well, with every steer, you obviously have pounds and pounds of wasted fat and most farmers will even give it away. Sometimes a farmer will find an alternate use for it. But I started to say, what if I use that fat to make soap? And so as I started to do more and more research, what I realized is beef tallow, it was an important part of homestead soaps, but it's been a practice that has been abandoned over the years. And so it's not like I'm killing a steer just to make soap, but I'm trying to find a way to maximize every piece and part of my steer because I feel like he gave his life for us. The most important thing I should do is respect that and try to maximize the usage. And so that's where this dream of making soap started to come from. I enlisted my friend Meg Holler to teach me how to make soap because she's an expert soap maker and soap making really is a craft. And over the course of the past nine months, I've made dozens of batches of soap just as a testing basis, trying to refine my recipes, trying to figure out my various scents. And while I never achieved that Malcolm Gladwell level of 10,000 hours of practice yet, I do feel like I've gotten better and I've figured out how to make a decent homestead soap. And I wanted to show you my exact process in this video. And with that practice, it really has me wanting to share this knowledge and show people that soap making isn't that hard if you're careful. And it really is a practice that you don't even need a farm or a homestead to start to undertake. And yes, the soap that I've been making over the past couple of weeks, as well as the soap that you're gonna see me make in this video, is gonna go on sale in a couple of weeks on our website. Would you look at that snow lean? <laughs> the roof on our farmhouse is specially designed so that the ice and snow slides right off. But every so often, it sort of gets stuck. Okay, it looks like all of our fats have melted. And by the way, I forgot to mention that I put some coconut oil and avocado oil in there too. After a lot of experimenting, I found that while a tallow bar of soap is really moisturizing and it lasts a really long time, it doesn't quite lather enough. And so what I've done with my soaps is it's usually a blend of coconut oil, avocado oil, and sometimes olive oil. Ultimately, each animal recipe has a different blend. But with my fats all melted, I think it's time for me to put on my special soap making robe. I don't know why I called this a robe, it's actually an apron. I found that soap making can be a little dirty and I've ruined a couple of shirts by having oil splash on it or coloring splash on it. And so these days when I'm making my soap, I usually wear this apron. It's not a necessity, but I find it helps. There we go, fit looks good. I find it helps to have this paper down and get my molds all ready because once I start the mixing process, things start to happen quick. Pouring the soap gets a little messy. And now I'm also gonna need to measure out all the rest of my ingredients. The ingredients include some water and specifically I'm gonna need 966 grams of water. A little too much. We'll just take a little bit of that back. Like I said, making soap needs to be very precise. Boom. Nailed it. I feel like a mad scientist in my laboratory. Next, I'm gonna measure out my essential oils. The essential oils are gonna be what ends up giving the soap its scent. For the Molly Murder Mittens variety of soap, I'm using a combination of eucalyptus and grapefruit. But let's get it all mixed up here. You don't usually put your essential oils in until the very end, but I like to have them pre-measured because once I get making of the soap, it moves pretty quick. <laughs> That's a potent smell right there. Wow. It would definitely wake you up if you took a shower with it in the morning. And now the final ingredient I need to use to make my soap is lye. Like I said earlier, it's a very dangerous substance. That's why if you're working with lye, it's really important to have the right safety precautions. That means gloves and eye protection. And now comes the most dangerous part of this process, mixing the lye with the water. To mix the lye with the water, you need to do it in a well-ventilated place. And you need to make sure you have your water in a container that's safe to use. That means don't use aluminum, and that means if you're gonna use glass, it needs to be Pyrex glass. You can't just use regular old glass. It'll probably shatter from the heat that gets created when you mix 
in the lye. What you're gonna do is just carefully put the lye into the water. Never pour the water into the lye. And you just slowly put it in there and then carefully stir it and then go away from it, leave the room. Again, make sure it's in a well-ventilated space. You can see I'm doing it here in the mud room with an open window. This way I can close off the door. I can make sure little barn cat doesn't get into it or I don't have an accident with one of the animals outside. You need to be very careful with lye. This is not something to mess around with. This is a chemical burger. Ah! Ah! Okay, our lye water is now prepared. As you can see, it's gone from like a really thick white to sort of just cloudy. You're gonna also notice that the lye water goes from being really, really hot to warmer. You wanna make sure that your fat as well as your lye get to about 100 degrees in temperature because now we're gonna mix the two things together. Now the other really important tool that's gonna be used in this process is this immersion blender. This is gonna help me mix the fat and the lye together. All right, and away we go. We're gonna mix this together. Now once you have your lye poured in, start the immersion process using the immersion blender. You can see this is what it starts to look like. It turns white and creamy and you're just going to want to blend it for a couple of minutes. I can't even imagine what soap making must have looked like in the olden days. Having a tool like an immersion blender makes this process really, really easy. But if I had to do this by hand, it would probably take me an hour or two. And the important thing is you want to keep your soap at that 100 degree mark roughly. Because if it gets too cool, it starts to coagulate and gets all hard and it won't pour into the molds. But yeah, you're just gonna patiently blend it all together. I think this process is known as saponification. This is actually where the soap gets made. The other important thing to note with this process is eventually it's gonna thicken up to the point where it starts to look like pudding. That's when it has saponified. And I think it's what's known as achieving trace. Now once your soap starts to achieve close to trace, like you can kind of see it, right? Like it's it's thickened up, it looks a lot more like a pudding consistency. When I try to run my thing through, it leaves a line. This is the point where I'll add my coloring. So we're doing this nice red color for Molly Murder Mittens. And this is actually the one part that I don't measure out carefully and rather what I do is I just try to achieve a specific shade of red. Once the soap ages a little bit and cures, it tends to lighten up. So it's gonna look a little probably darker than I typically would go for, but mixing it in. Now at the very end, we add our essential oils. You want to get everything really blended and mixed up. There we go. Okay, we can take this off the immersion blender. And now, much like the royalty soaps lady would say, we're gonna pour it in and scrapey scrapey. And yeah, the royalty soaps lady is my favorite soap YouTuber. What I find is good is just to get them out into the molds as quick as you can. Gotta work quick, because it's gonna cool. And then from here, carefully spread them in place, just like this. Gosh, I don't usually make videos like this where it's like a tutorial. <laughs> it's way more stressful than my usual type of video. Yeah, I landed on these shapes. I experimented with cutting bars. I experimented with like using special molds. I kind of just like how it's simple and it really fits and forms well to your hand so that like if you're using it in the shower, it feels like it's a natural use. I never thought I'd actually like the process of making soap, but I found it to become very soothing and relaxing and I quite like it. <laughs> I don't know, soap making might seem as something that guys shouldn't be doing. It's like not a masculine activity. And that's where I think like kind of gender stereotypes like that are so stupid because I don't know, I quite like the process, I find it quite relaxing, and I don't know, I don't think it's a gender-based thing. So there you go. Another reason why patriarchy's stupid. By the way, you might notice that I have this paper out while I'm spreading out all my soap. That's because I've learned the hard way that this process can be a little bit messy, and it's much easier to just roll up and throw away the craft paper than it is to try to scrub off and clean our island. I think I was really annoying my wife with how messy some of my soap experiments were. And so as I've been in production mode, I've tried really hard to actually 
make it a much cleaner and easier to clean up process. By the time I'm done making all of our farm production soap, it'll, it'll be about 14 batches of soap that I think I'm gonna make. You know, multiples of each animal, particularly a lot of extra Toby dog, because I'm gonna assume that that's gonna be the popular variety. <laughs> but we'll see, maybe it won't be. Maybe because you guys are watching this Molly Murder Mitten soap get made, this is gonna be the popular variety of soap, who knows? What I'm trying to do is just even them out. The goal is not to have a smooth top, but try to fill each cup all the way. Looking good, looking good. And there we have it. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna let these soaps sit in the mold for 24 hours and we'll check back in tomorrow morning. So it's now the next morning and as you can see, all of the soaps have dried. They're not completely dried, but they're dried enough so that I can take them out of the molds. So that's what I'm gonna do now. At this stage of the game, what I'm gonna have to do is store these and cure these soaps for about four to five weeks. I don't want them to break when they're shipping. I want them to be in the best possible condition for when people actually buy them from me. And so you'll see them sit on the shelves. That's why I know some of you guys might wanna buy some of this soap at the end of this video. Unfortunately, I won't be taking orders for a couple more weeks. And the only way to be able to get on the list to do the orders and at least get an immediate notification when the orders go live is to sign up for our email list. I will leave a link for that email list down in the description of this video. But here you go. I just took them out of at least one of the molds here. This right here is what the final product looks like. It's got this very cool kind of cupcake cake shape to it. And the reason I actually like it like this is because if you're using it like as a body soap or something, it's easy to like hold and you know, scrub your body with it. You know, that way your soap melts down evenly. But yeah, this is what one of the bars looks like. Here, let's take out the next mold. It's actually very satisfying to pop these things out of the mold. And so yeah, we've got these nice little Molly Murder Mitten soaps here. And if you're wondering if these soaps pass the sniff test, they most definitely do. So I hope you've enjoyed the process of watching me make soap. Be sure to watch another one of our videos. And like I said, if you wanna get our soaps and get on our mailing list, I'll leave a link for it down below. Thanks a lot, I'll talk to you guys soon.